feel like I'm on a date. I know, it does feel like that. Speed dating. <laughs> so today we're talking about AI and what that means for marketing. I always kind of liked GPTs. The acronym is Generative Pre-Trained Transformers. It's, they sound really ominous. They sound like it's going to be like a Michael Bay movie. Not only is it becoming something that's prevalent in many factors in, in our lives, but also in marketing, it is a huge one. What does it mean for us and marketing? Well, it's been like a year now, I'd say, a solid year of, of people really using them. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah. You know? um, in that year, so much has already changed and happened. You know, we were able to actually put a proper learning together for our, our agency and, and help people understand how they how we can use AI and and marketing so that the two complement each other. And then just a bit of foreground, you are head of digital strategy and I'm in the creative field and we both use AI yeah. equally. If not, if you might be using it more than I do at this point and it is just far beyond the the cool pictures or the cool designs that you can create. It's gone so much further than just content creation and writing captions for social posts and shit like that like and i think the big thing that came out of our, our company learning was to use it to enhance your role and not replace your role and i think once we went down that road it started to become like this assistant you know like my job my junior strategist's job became a lot more of a a sounding board Whereas I think in the beginning, everyone thought that it was going to be push the button, there's the generate, you know, give it to the client. Yeah. Whereas there's so much more human interaction that's needed with it because it makes mistakes. It doesn't get things right. So I think this is also where having your expert knowledge in what you are doing and using it for that, you're not doing, using it for something that you feel that you're not familiar or like an expert in. So therefore you are able to go and proof it and be like, well, actually, I can see that that is a mistake. Whereas if you were just a firm, a company using AI, you wouldn't actually know that's whether it. or not that was wrong or right. So you've hit the nail on the head yeah. perfectly there. Because if you don't know what, you, what you're what you talking about, if you don't know your, your role, you're going to give stuff to a client that is wrong. 100%. It's going to happen. Because if you're just using it to for answers and you don't understand you know the intricacies of a marketing strategy and you ask it to write a marketing strategy for this client yeah. it'll give you something but it's going to be very generic yeah. it's going to it's not going to have the nuances of your industry even if you a lot of that, even if you're putting all of that into the brief a lot of the time it's still giving you stuff that is just not the way I would write a strategy yeah it's not going to say ah you know I actually can't give you the strategy because it's not up to scratch it's going to give you anything you ask for, but there's no like quality control. And that's a, it's, it's about how you ask. Yeah. It's, it, it, and that was a big part of the learning is how you ask for the answers. Mm. And what we found was that the more detailed you got, the better the answers got, obviously, right? So if you were just generic to say, I'd like a content plan for this company in commercial real estate. Yeah. It would give you something because it, it, that's the other thing. It never says no. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it irritates me sometimes. I want it to say no, don't do It's a yes man. A yes man. Wow. It will always come up with answers. And it, it generally, they're the same answers. It just says it in a different way. So it's been really interesting using it in that way to, to understand how it interprets the questions that you are asking us, yeah. So you've spoken about how it's enhancing how we work and especially for marketing, how it can enhance as a your little assistant, unpaid assistant. What are the sort of issues that we can expect to, to deal with or some that we should maybe prepare for? So the big one for us that we've seen is over-reliance on the GPT. As soon as you move into this realm of being over-reliant on the information it's giving you, yeah. you start to run the risk of not doing your job anymore basically mm -hmm. if you rely on it too much you lose that hands-on touch to mm -hmm. to your job basically and if you're over-reliant you stop thinking 
Yeah. And that's really dangerous. We don't want to go down that road. It's like when Google first came out, how, how people used to just rely on Google for everything. Yeah, but well, I mean, before that, you used to, you know, phone your smart aunt, yeah. you know, and be like, hey, like, we're discussing this. What's the answer? And she'd give you the answer, or you'd look in an encyclopedia. But you'd be over-reliant on the smart aunt as well. So right. So it, Go look for yourself. Exactly. And, and now it's obviously, you know, ridiculously simple and, and easy, and you, there's even more information at our fingertips all the time. And if you're, if you're putting in prompts like, you know, build me a content plan for this client and you aren't at least having some input into that what are you learning there's a bit of a a way that you go about using ai once you have given it a prompt and maybe you're not happy with it or you are how do you go about sort of taking it further and teaching it because it is a learning model yeah i think the more and more you use it it starts to you start to develop like a little relationship with it weirdly and I am polite. Uh, it's just it's, it's the way I would try and speak to another human being. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I started when I first started using it. I would say, "Give me a list," and then they would give me a list, and I'd say, "More or that's or, really rude." I'd say, "More, more, more." Very rude, John. <laughs> but is that a is that the wrong way to go about it? How do you? Yeah. Well, it, look. I mean, the polite thing is just that's just me, but. When we talk about feedback loops, so this is, uh, we found, I found this quite important. Giving the AI, giving the GPT as much feedback as you can on its answers. When you do that, it starts to learn. It starts to learn how to answer in a more constructive way. So if you're, if you're giving it very basic briefs and, um, and prompts and it gives you basic answers, that's really all you're going to get out of it. Yeah. And if you're using those in your work, that is a bit of an issue. That's a problem because anyone can do that. What, what we tend to do is if I ask it for something and it doesn't quite get it right, I'll actually give it the feedback and say, listen, uh, 80% of that was really great. The first three points were, were on, you know, they were spot on. The last two points, that didn't really make sense with what our client's trying to achieve can you just think about the fact that they're trying to do this, what you've said doesn't actually work within their business model. So you're treating it like a real person. Treating it like a real person, like almost something, someone you're kind of training or if you've got a junior, you know, as this assistant. And it will then, you know, basically say, cool, thanks for the feedback. That makes sense. I understand. Uh, and, and, and from them, it starts to understand a lot more of what the business is trying to achieve so the feedback loops are, are really important you know how, how do our different departments use or how should different marketing departments use ai how can we break that up into department specific uses yeah like we said like we said in the beginning in the beginning <laughs> i always sorry i, just, yeah. I can never not in the being a bit in the beginning listen properly you know um we only thought it was going to be kind of a content thing right now We've seen that it works across departments within the agency. So from account management to, you know, your coordinators and account executives to content creators, to strategists, to creatives, it works within to paid media, to SEO, it works within each of these departments and there's different ways to use it. So how would account managers use AI in in the day to day work? You can use it to write emails, you know, if, if you've. If you need to summarize a meeting, uh, using it for meeting notes. I think that's a cool one, the, the meeting note one. I think we use a lot. We use it a lot. You know, we, we used to have lots of people just writing stuff down and then you never see those notes. Whereas, you know, you need everyone's notes. So we we do take notes in, in meetings, but using AR to then summarize everything. So everyone has a really good idea of what happened in the meeting. Mm. There are AI assistants for Teams calls and Zoom calls. I've been seeing clients use them as well. Quite cool. Um, but also in the briefing process. So briefing creators, briefing strategy, briefing paid media, using AI to help you build that brief um, based on the information that you, you you need for your campaign or whatever it is. So that's um, that's often quite a laborious task for account managers to keep you know like constantly putting briefs together so, so yeah I mean, we've obviously got the templates but using AI to fill those templates in 
Um, and then just going through it and making sure that everything's right. Like, I'm going to say this for everything, like as a caveat to everything is, you have to go through everything with a human eye to make sure that it's not spewing shit mm -hmm. because it can. So, that, yeah, there's some cool uses for account management. Nice. And then, you know, people working for or doing work with account managers would be account executives or coordinators. How would they then kind of keep that golden thread going? Obviously, you know, they, they're managing a lot of the smaller delegated tasks. So oftentimes it's like content creation. If, if they're writing social media captions and stuff like that, that's obviously a, a pretty simple one. But also analyzing data. So if, if there's a, a paid campaign that's gone out and they need to do a summary for the clients, they're able, to, you can use the AI to help you summarize that campaign or that report or whatever it is and put it into an email that is easily understandable for your client based on their level of expertise in marketing, which is which is pretty cool. So some speed work. Yeah, it, it, a lot of the time, that's what AI is helping us do. It's helping us meet deadlines. It's helping us get stuff done faster. It should also be said that we don't want to get to a stage where we're able to do things too quickly because the expectations then change, which becomes an issue. We, we still need, you still need time to perform things adequately, yeah. responsibly. And I think, especially for like content creation uh, and videos specifically, like what, what I end up doing most of my days is editing videos. And what I find a lot of the time is there's this expectation where you can fix something in post and that's an age old thing with video. But now with AI... It's, it's as if you can say that for absolutely anything. Like there, there must be a tool. Are there? The, the thing is there probably is, but, you know, or will be soon. But there is just that expectation that anything can be done using AI. And yeah, which is good. Best. It's good. It's good, right? But it's also bad. Yeah. You have like a, a certain degree of work that you want to do. And you know your sort of skills that you specialize in. And then... Now you expected to be able to wear 10 different hats and kind of just make a plan for anything, for everything. But it's, it's the same. It's like measure twice, cut once where now there's no reason to, to measure twice. Just, just cut it. And, and then you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out later on. There's always a solution. Whereas that probably ends up taking more time. So that reliance on being able to fix in posts is something that actually sounds like it's saving time but will cost more time in the long run we need to get stuff done quickly you know and you need to get deadlines done and it's going to save people from staying at work until 10 o'clock at night not that we encourage that or that happens very often but you know if you've got a really tight turnaround a lot of the time you're going to be able to get your work done within your your work day yeah. and the help using ai is 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 going to help you achieve that a lot of the time. And even if you've got a, a crazy, crazy deadline, you're going to cut off a few hours. Yeah. And then for paid media teams, how, how can they use AI? Because that's quite a deep understanding of insights and data. Uh, the insights thing is what excites me when it comes to paid media. You've got vast amounts of data from all these campaigns. And what we're able to do now is basically throw that all into a GPT and ask it to pull out patterns, which is is fine for someone who's been in the industry for a long time and they have the experience and they can look at data and they can see the patterns and the insights. But, you know, if you have a relatively junior team that's, that's running campaigns, they're not necessarily always going to be able to see those patterns. So putting that data into a, a GPT and asking it to pull out those insights and patterns is a really cool way of of using it and um that's that's the power of of the gpt is is taking data and turning it into something that we can action recommendations yeah. insights learnings because it's one thing to ask it just to create content but it's another th you know interpreting data is that for me is is quite exciting. I really like that side of things. So it's also a side that I think is subjective to a lot of human error. Exactly you know? right. If you get if you kind of get one number wrong in a sequence, 
It, yeah, the pattern is off. You know, the the it's butterfly effect, the butterfly snowball effect of yeah. that and snowballs. Um, <laughs> that's really exciting. Nice. I mean, obviously, you're in strategy. We've briefly touched on how you use it, but how could other people? I don't apply it. I don't really want to give away my your secrets, huh? The, <laughs> the way I use it, because I think that is going to become a thing. Yeah, the way people use these AI tools is going to be different to how other people use them. So I don't, I don't really want to give away too much too many of my secrets and tell people how much it's actually helping me but I think for us it, it's quite handy in understanding socioeconomic factors when it comes to our clients what's happening in in the industry uh, what is you know if industrial is down what does that mean for the rest of you know so 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 using it to understand those bigger things from a strategic point of view and understanding the client's business operations. That's probably one that you need to teach the most at the department, teaching about your audience, your clients, the the business that they're in. So when we build the, the strategic GPTs, when I put them together for the clients, there's a lot of information that goes into those. It's generally a lot of the time I'm taking the strategy that we have for them and I'm feeding all of that information into that GPT. And then I... I then go in and I test it and I test it on, tell me what the, our three key audiences are. What are their main needs? What are our content pillars? What paid channels are we using? What organic channel? And if it gets anything wrong, you correct it. To go in and correct Feedback it. loop. And, and do that feedback loop. Like, listen, you haven't taken the strategy. You need to learn the strategy. You got the channels wrong. Like we're not using that channel for these reasons. And then, you know, so there is a lot that goes into that. But once you've, once you've got that, it does help you immensely in terms of yeah. just just putting a deck together that makes sense based on the brief and, and make sure you're not missing anything. And um, at the end of the day, you know, we need to, to do the best work for the client. It's not our pride that that's, we should be worried about getting in the way. Yeah. Doing the best work is what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. And I think across the board, I mean, we see that even with, with content creation. I think a lot of um, there's a, there's a few silos, especially in in marketing companies or advertising companies, where the creative team are the the, the wildly kind of creative outcasts that go and do the little things in a dark room somewhere. But I think with AI, it, it has kind of brought in this whole other sort of approach to content creation, and especially with things like SEO, which was an unknown term in the content creation sort of world especially with like graphic designers like how are you seeing like content creation be influenced by ai hugely hugely content creation design writing seo all of that comes into it now and there's so much you can do yeah there's really so much you can do yeah yeah i mean there's there's video ones now where they generate so the design aspect is insane and that's I'm I don't know where that's gonna end up because that is already it's wild yeah. that you, you're able to to create a movie just by putting a prop. Yeah, literally. I, like that for me is is absolutely insane. But you know, our designers are working very closely with it in terms of it providing in um, mood boards and it providing inspiration for ideas yeah. and ideation. And in taking that and and you know designing it effectively ar- around the client's CI and, and and making sure that it's getting all the things right. But then the writing side, I think the blog and SEO side is super valuable because we're able to create really powerful SEO-driven blogs. And with the way that Google is going with their AI and how that's being incorporated into search and into SEO. Youth, utilizing the the GPTs is going to be very important in how we write blog content, and it's moving quickly. Recently, we've just we just put a strategy together, and, and a big part of that was SEO driven and 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 Google ads, Google search ads driven, and we used the GPTs to come up with rate like take the keywords uh, based on 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 the brief. And what we needed to target, and it it built us 
Google search ads that would be really effective and you know that they work really well so again you know taking a lot of time out of but if you don't know what you don't know you you don't know go in and look um, and if you don't understand how search ads work and you just ask it to build you a search ad you're just gonna see that and accept it cool this looks okay yep whereas our you know our specialist paid media team can go through it and be like no that is it's so off the mark there so that's but it helps them get something down you know and it just saves a lot of time that way so again you know that human element enhancing and not replacing i think that's that's our main takeaway key takeaway from this entire the whole learning that we did and this podcast is the, the is this focus on enhancing not replacing and and this is where we need to be careful yeah. because I can, you know, I can get someone to write or put it like I can get a GBT to put an entire presentation deck together. But when you go and present that, it's going to be a joke because you're not going to know what's in it. You're not going to understand the content. And you're going to get a question that you can't be. Question, you're not going to, know how to answer it. Yeah. So you can do the work for you. But if you don't understand yeah, yeah. what it's doing and you don't understand what's right and wrong, there's no point in doing it. If you're the client, I guess it's okay. But as an agency and as a specialist in your field, yeah. if you are doing that, you need to go in and read that and understand it. And that is where you can get better. Because if I ask you to put together a blog on SEO in the acquisition space for you know commercial real estate, yeah, God forbid, real inv- real estate investment trusts. If you had to put that together, you could ask Chat ChatGPT to put that together. I could either just give it to you, and I'm going to say to you, "Hey, can you just explain like this this blog?" Yeah, yeah. You're not going to know. But if you go and do it, and you read it, and you and you go through everything, you you are then learning something. So there is a really great learning opportunity if people use it, if they take it, and if they use it to enhance their careers. <laughs> and knowing people, they're probably not going to do that. Well, we, 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 you know, we're trying to... We will do it, yeah. We're trying to instill that. Use it to enhance your career and not replace you. Boom.